Welcome to this online lecture of modern physics. Uh, we have started with the fourth chapter, atomic models. And in the previous lecture, we discussed this Thomson's atomic model. And for this lecture, my plan is to discuss these two topics, Rutherford scattering experiment and outcome of the experiment. So this is the uh, Thomson's atomic model in brief. Atom is considered to be a sphere in which these negative electrons are embedded in positive matter. So this pink, pink shade you see is basically the uh, positive matter. And these are the electrons here. And these electrons are now uniformly distributed so that there is no dipoles formed. There are electric dipoles and quadrupoles formed when you have uneven distribution of charges, which is not there since electrons are uniformly distributed throughout the spherical atom. And therefore, the individual atom does not have any electric field of its own, inherent electric field of its own, according to Thomson's model. Moreover, this pink shade is, is positive matter. And the net charge is such that this positive matter, which is rest of the atom and the electron combined, their charges is always neutral. So whatever is the positive charge of this matter, pink matter is same as negative charges of collectively all the electrons and therefore atom as a whole is electrically neutral. And sometimes because of the structure of this model, it is called as plum pudding model. We, have, we are following this theme of science that how science developed uh, with theory and experiments hand in hand. So we had experimental evidences that atoms exist. Then Thomson proposed an atomic model. And what was next step? Next, to, next step was to experimentally verify whether atoms can actually have the structure as proposed by Thomson's atomic model. I mean, the experiment which tested whether the atomic structure can be as proposed by uh, Thomson's model was done by this uh, Rutherford scattering experiment. In this experiment, Rutherford checked whether the model can, whether the atoms can have atomic stru structures as proposed by Thomson. Now, let me ask you this. How would you check the atom? Let me take you back to this period in history. And let me ask you this, that if you were the experimental physicist who wanted to check whether the atom can have the structure as proposed by Thomson or not, what would you do? How can, how could you do it? Okay, actually, one more thing, uh, protons, existence of protons and neutrons uh, wasn't known when Thomson proposed the atom. Okay, that's why he assumed some randomly, I mean, there was no specification to what that positive matter in atoms is. Right. And see what you have to check is whether the structure of the atom is as proposed by Thomson or not. If you are given a fruit, you don't know how it is, what is the structure inside? How, you have, how do you check the structure of that fruit? You have to dissect it. You have to cut into pieces. But now when it comes to atoms, atoms, is very, atoms are very, very small. And therefore, cutting it into pieces is not possible. What is the other way? You can poke in it. You can take uh, some sharp object and try to insert that object inside the fruit to see what kind of structure the fruit has, right? So exactly that was the plan by Rutherford. He, he thought about taking a tool which can be inserted into atom and based on how the tool behaves, he thought maybe we can reveal the uh, atomic structure. And that tool that he chose was alpha particles. What are alpha particles? Alpha particles are helium nuclei. It's uh, atomic number is two. Sorry, it's ma yes, atomic number is two and its mass number is four. So it has two protons and it has two neutrons, right? And the electrons are stripped off from that helium atom and therefore it is just the nucleus. Now through hindsight, we know about alpha particles that how, what is the structure of alpha particles. At that time, this structure was not known. It was not known what alpha particles are, but all they knew was there are these particles which have charges 
uh, same as plus two electrons, and it has some mass. But they also knew that these particles are very small. Radioactivity was discovered, and therefore alpha particles were known. So he he maybe he thought maybe we could use alpha particles to check the structure of the atom. And exactly that is what we have to do. We have to now discuss the experimental setup that Rutherford and his team. It was not individual. It is generally a group of scientists uh, who perform the experiment. So Rutherford was the uh, main scientist in that group, and then maybe he had some students, postdoctorate and uh, doctorate students, who were helping him him in all these experiments. Right. So can you all see that square pink here on the screen? Yeah. What do you think it is? The source of Alpha particles. So he took a source of alpha particles. Naturally, what? Okay. Naturally, what would happen? What can? What would be the direction of alpha particles which is emitted by this source? Is it unidirectional? Are the alpha particles emitted in a particular direction when they are emitted from the source? no they are randomly emitted in all the directions there is no preferred direction and alpha particles therefore are emitted in all the possible directions right then what he did was okay what is this now okay i have to write everything once again alpha particles source is there what do you think this is now it is lead collimator what is a collimator why did he need a collimator in this alpha particles which are emitted by this source they move in all the possible directions but he wanted them to have a particular direction and therefore once this lead collimator is placed suppose when alpha particle enters from this point and it has small y component of the velocity along with x component so what will happen it will once it enters into this collimator it will try to move in along y axis either upward or downward and in the process that particle which has some component y component will be absorbed by that uh, lead because lead has this property that it absorbs the alpha particles and therefore in the end when alpha part when an alpha particle emerges that means it is very streamlined particle its y component even if it is zero it is almost uh, even if it is non zero is almost zero the, it is negligible so this lead collimator made sure that alpha particle beam of al alpha particle which he obtained at the end of this lead collimator is streamlined it is only along one axis let us call that as x axis so that that beam is now moving almost horizontally there is almost zero component to or al almost zero component along y axis is it fine so alpha particles are emitted we have a collimator and at the collimator or rather not we So Rutherford had a streamlined alpha particle beam, which is moving in one direction. Even if there is y component, it is very small. You can arbitrarily increase this length of collimator and make uh, the y component zero and zero for the particles which are coming out of the other end of that collimator. Is this fine? Is it okay? Are there any doubts so far? Okay. What do you think this? a uh, yellow strip now is so this is alpha particle so yes it is gold foil this is lead collimator and this is a gold foil and it is very thin foil uh, what he did was uh, he took a piece of a plate of gold and hammered it until he got a very 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 thin gold foil which is just a few micrometer in thickness okay and once that is done what will happen is these alpha particles are streamlined and it will it will now pass through this gold foil this gold foil is very thin and therefore these alpha particle will now penetrate through uh, the atoms of gold which are there which is making up that gold foil and what is missing in this setup now we have this setup we have alpha particles we have this collimator which is giving a streamlined flow or streamlined alpha particle beam and we have this gold so we have atoms gold atoms here and we have alpha particles which are passing through that 
so in this experimental setup now what is the thing which is missing if we, right all of you are correct so whenever we perform some experiment physics or in any other subject one thing what we want to do is we want to observe what is happening there so as far as this setup is considered there is nothing which which observes the outcome of the experiment so for that he put this screen right this square here tries to show the screen and this dashed line or dashed circle is kind of arrangement along which this screen can be moved about the circle so you can choose any angle this angle theta and you can place the screen right what do you do you see any other arrangement that is specific here is is that screen kept randomly for this gold foil around this gold foil okay my question i guess is not clear what i am asking is the screen and the gold foil has this specific geometrical arrangement at least as seen from the diagram and it was the case when rutherford performed the experiment what is the geometrical arrangement geometrical relation between this gold foil and that screen yeah that is one thing uh, we don't know in which direction the alpha particle will move and therefore the screen is placed so that we can observe alpha particle any anywhere around that gold foil once they are scattered from the atoms within the gold foil but the arrangement geometrical arrangement i am talking about here is that this gold foil is at the center of the circle about which this screen can be moved and why it is so because it makes sure that the distance no matter where you observe the alpha particles scattered from that gold foil the distance between the screen and the gold foil is always constant no matter where I, at which angle i observe the alpha particles this distance between the gold foil and the screen is always same because we are moving it in in uh, along a circle and center of that circle is roughly the gold foil from and the point from where the alpha particles are being scattered so this gold foil is kept at the center and then you can rotate this screen or move this screen about a circle and you can see or you can observe the alpha particle which are coming from the gold foil now actually this uh, you needed a micro uh, rutherford or you would need a microscope to observe when alpha particles hit the screen when it hits the screen it will start illuminating a uh, bright spot will emerge where the alpha particle hits the screen and then you can use a microscope and observe how many particles are hitting that particular pa at that particular angle is this arrangement clear so you have a alpha particle source you have this column collimator so that we have a streamlined beam of alpha particle which is then made to pass through this gold foil and the atoms in the gold foil now scatter the alpha particles the or at least the alpha particles would pass through those atoms and then you have this arrangement in form of this screen where you can see that at what angle how many alpha particles are hitting when they are scattered from the gold foil is it fine is it, have you got so far is everyone with me on this and remember my words no doubt is a silly doubt because when we discussed uh, when we dis when we will discuss uh, special theory of relativity einstein asked a, a foolish question which at least sounded foolish at that time and that led to the development of this whole new theory theory of special relativity and general relativity which are magical theories in themselves okay let's continue in this experiment of rutherford then which tries to check the thomson's atomic model so this is the atom which i am trying to draw here with the circle there you can see the electrons and now if you were rutherford if you were the ones who were making these alpha particles pass through the atoms what do you think what would ha happen to what would happen to the direction of these alpha particles will they divert will they deviate will they what will happen is this uh, alpha particle the mass of the alpha particle was known at that time and if you find out the ratio of alpha particle to electrons 
the ratio is uh, it is quite high actually i noted it down noted that ratio down let me check and i'll tell you uh, what is that ratio it is okay so mass of alpha particle two mass of electron is uh, sorry it is 7290 so it is roughly uh, 7000 times so alpha particles are 7000 times heavier or massive as compared to electrons so it is as if a train hits an human being who is of roughly 70 kg so therefore if this happens you don't expect train to deviate so even if these alpha particles scattered through this these electrons what will happen is these electrons will move but the direction of alpha particle will almost be unchanged the another thing because of which these alpha particles can be scattered is due to the charges if there was some some uh, uh, charge distribution which was uneven like if there was this region which was mostly positively charged as compared to this region which is negatively charged then what would happen is these alpha alpha particles will be repelled and therefore they will scatter but the way thomson proposed the atom there was no such charge uh, imbalance the charges were distributed uniformly throughout the atom and therefore this re this reason could not be there which can deflect the alpha particle so there was no reason for alpha particle to deflect at all when they pass through such atoms and these electrons they may deviate the alpha particles by small amount but the amount the deviation will be very small and what was observed is this alpha particle should pass with almost no uh, deviation as uh, who just answered expected that almost all the alpha particles should pass without no deviation it was true that most of the alpha particles were uh, passing through the gold foil without any deviation but the number of deviated particles was more than what was expected right so this was uh, one small drawback or one uh, suggestion one hint that atoms could not be the way as proposed by thomson what else if there is deviation according to the thomson atomic model if there is deviation of the alpha particle which will happen only with very small number of particle even if it is there it should be very small what was observed it was observed that though the number of alpha particles scat being scattered through that atom the number was very small but the deviation in in that small number was more than what was expected and what else this last thing there should not be back scattering at all at all what do i mean by scatter back scattering is this the particles in no way would scatter completely in backward direction they will have if i consider this angle this line which is at 90 degrees to the direction of alpha particle then these alpha particles will never deviate with an angle which is greater than 90 degrees and definitely they will not deviated by complete 180 degrees there will be no back scattering at 180 degrees and this was not at all uh, expected so they shouldn't back scatter at all but what was observed a few particles back scattered a few particles alpha particles they scattered with an angle which was more than 90 degrees and even a small number of them even scattered by 180 degrees there so they completely reversed their direction this was not at all expected in rutherford's words this is not a verbatim okay it is i don't know whether this is what he exactly said but uh, it is it gives you a, it gives us an idea of how much he was shocked when they observed the back back scattered alpha particle what he says that he says that they, it was as if they were firing bullet towards a paper and when you are firing bullets towards a paper you expect that the bullets should pass through they should uh, break the paper and it the bullet should pass through that paper but it was as if the bullet were scattered and they hit them back which is quite not possible and the observations and what they expected it differs it differs completely as far as back scattering is considered and therefore what was the next step in our progression of atomic physics 
that experimental verification failed and therefore what they needed was a new theory for atomic structure so this is the summary that what we have done so far we proposed atomic structure atomic model thomson proposed an atomic model rutherford performed this scattering experiment and the outcomes of experiments were such that the theory of, or the atomic structure as proposed by thomson or the theory that was proposed by thomson for atomic model was wrong so we will i think this is uh the end of this first module from from next lecture that is tomorrow we will consider the rutherford's atomic model which he proposed since the it was clear that thomson's atomic model cannot be correct rutherford explain or he proposed a model based uh on what the experiments were suggesting we will start with that from tomorrow